Hi everyone, Emma here. I'm getting ready to redo my tutorial from yesterday. Um, I'm still working on retrieving that file, but in the meantime, I think I can do a better job the second time around and streamline it so it's not so long. So I am going to get started and I'm going to use this beautiful um, flat shell disc type button that I got from Kelly's Bead Boutique and I'm going to go ahead and string it. So let's set that aside for now. So in my other video I talked a lot about um, color choices and one of the things I do is I try and pick a color in the bead that's not as prominent and I use that for my um, to match my leather or my button. So there, that's how you string it on and we'll do a barrel knot. So what I picked on this was this kind of um, orangey red brown color and you can kind of see how it matches a bit with the uh, the leather so hopefully that'll bring that out so let's go ahead and do the barrel knot so I'm just gonna pull a little more cord out on the one strand to make these strands even because it takes a bit of cord to do your barrel knot so that is the top one so I'm just gonna place my button and I think I'm going to do three times around. How many times around for me depends on the size of the button and the size of the beads. So this is a small, I would consider this a, a small to medium button and definitely small beads. So I would keep the uh, barrel knot to three loops and just pull that through and take your barrel off and I am going to scooch my knot forward as I pull it tight and I'm going to pull it down a bit. I like mine to sit this way. You can pull yours right up to the button. And this leather's nice and soft, so you can squeeze it and move it around to the spot you like. So there. Okay. And I'm going to put a loose knot at the bottom, and I'm going to attach it to my board. And I'll do that off camera because it's you can't see the whole thing anyway. And then I am going to use this lovely nylon uh, thread and my 11 uh, gold eye needle beading needle and uh, I'm going to condition my thread with my beeswax so I'm going to get that all set up and ready to go so this video doesn't run into an hour it should be more like a half an hour so I'll be right back okay I um, got started now on the original bracelet I left this gap here from the barrel knot to the first bead and I kind of like this look um, and it is a relatively stable so it's not a big issue. I go through the beads a second time around and that stabilizes the beads which in turn stabilizes the cord. So you can do it both, both ways but I thought for this uh, um, tutorial I'd show you how you can add these tiny beads to um, to stabilize that part of the uh, the bracelet and what I used was these tiny four millimeter Amazonite uh, beads that I got from BB craft so um, yeah so you start out with one 
and then the second row you put two and the third row you put three and you continue like that until you get to the, sh the uh, length of the bead that you're using so if you had a smaller bead or a shorter bead you would go to just two so that's all I did and um, it is a bit uh, I mean it's tight but it is a bit wonky like if I pop that it would go through once we get to the end of all these beads we'll come back around and we'll go through these again and that will totally stabilize it they will not move it'll be nice and stable um, these strands have 30 of these beads on it and um, that fits my wrist comfortably with some wiggle room and my wrist is a six and a half inch wrist so if you have a seven inch wrist which is more common for women um, just be aware that what you might want to do is add more elements at the beginning and at the end as well as if you add say another loop to your barrel knot on each end that will extend it considerably it's like adding a whole other knot because you're going to add this knot here and two knots at the end so that in turn makes three loops so every little uh, little bit like that counts when you're only talking half an inch so it's easy you could probably just put another row of these little beads to add it and the reason I, I suggest that too is the other option is to buy two strands of these but I'm always trying to think of ways to make your uh, components as inexpensive as possible so that anybody could have a beautiful bracelet so if you only have enough for one strand for three dollars for the beads and you know however much you pay for your leather and maybe 50 cents for your button then for under five dollars you can have this stunning bracelet so yeah that's where I'm coming from with that kind of stuff so I am gonna go ahead and show you just quickly how I string these tubes so just go ahead I'll do a few of them and then I'll pause this and come back when it's done and I'll, I'll sh like when we're at the end of these so we can I can show you how to start um, putting your um, moving your thread through the second time So I'll explain to you what I'm doing here in case you haven't seen any of my other ones. So you string your bead, pull it through. I've got some stuff on my desk that's getting caught here. So pull it through all the way through your thread and just move this tail. I wrap it around my button and it gets it away so it doesn't get tangled you're going to go over your both pieces of leather cord I hold the bead with my finger and I can reposition it as needed then I go underneath the right hand cord through the bead and underneath the left and come out again I hang on to my bead with the other hand and pull my thread through all the way through watching you don't get a knot and then pull it a little snug and these beads are uh, have nice big holes so uh, you can go through easily you could probably use a sewing needle and you can also use this um, one millimeter waxed uh, thread I think they call it cord but it's you get the idea so you can use this I love using this I used to use it all the time but it doesn't work on um, check glass beads because they're so tiny it ends up breaking them uh, when you try and go through a second time but this is lovely because it it gives a really neat um, texture on your uh, on your leather cord and it like really forms to it so you can always use that too and you could also use a, an alternating or coordinating uh, color of uh, thread as well so just come through 
true. Now, some people will um, do their second pass through each bead in, individually. So, at this point, you could go back. But I find what that does, and I'll show you. So, you see here there's oh sorry my fingers are dirty i was polishing buttons and the the metal filings really dirtied my fingers and i tried like three or four times to wash them <laughs> wouldn't come off um okay so this thread on this side is all on an angle if i were to go through this a second time this is what it would look like So you would get this cross here and then this straight line on this side. So I think that the better way is to go all the way through and then when we come back up we'll follow the path of the uh, bracelet. The other thing I saw on, um, I'm going to try this and we won't do it uh, on this bracelet but I'll show you what it looks like. Is they've alternated two beads with uh, round beads and different colors and stuff like that it looks amazing so here's an example of what it would look like so that would look really cool you could put a couple of rows of these little guys in there and that would extend your beads as well so that's an idea so I'm going to go ahead with the rest of these and when I get to the end I'll be right back. I'm at the end and I ended with 3, 2 and 1 of those uh, Amazonite uh, beads and I am going to pull this tight and I am going to go through this first one a second time and then I'm going to come and I'll show you how to flip your thread so that it's going the right way. So for this one here, you are going to get a line across, which isn't a big deal. So we'll put that through the top. And this, we're going to cinch it so that it pulls. And it will, if you hold it and pull, it pulls this one here as well so that cord is tight there okay so now we want to flip our thread so this is going to go underneath through the bead and I'm just positioning my bead then instead of going underneath this cord we're going to go over over top and that will give us the position for following the thread the way it came down. So now we're going to go above to the two beads and we're going to go under. And you can use your fingernail to pop your bead down so that you can access the hole and make sure you go through both beads and under and don't, yeah that didn't go through the second bead. Just make sure you don't poke your leather there. And pull it tight. And now we're going to go over top. Now this one you can just go over top. And you can see I poked. I don't know if that was the leather or the thread there. Okay, and we're so we're going to stabilize these three here. So we go under. And I use my nail to pop the bead down, jiggle my needle to find the holes, get through and uh, a little bit of moving around. Okay. This wants to go through the leather. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. It'll be a little easier for you. I'm doing this with a camera in front of my hand, so it's a bit hard. So now I'll pop those up so I can see where the holes are. OK. 
get the needle in there and through all three and then kind of use my nail as a guard and there we go now the two beads will be a lot easier and we're almost at the end here so I'm going to show you how to change your thread so that you don't have any knots okay we'll go through the next tube and that's a little easier the holes are bigger so they go through quicker when I go to change my thread I make sure that I'm in a position where the beads that I'm going to be threading through have big holes and that's because you're now going to go more than twice through a bead you're going to go three or four times through a bead so I wouldn't go through these tiny ones although I was surprised the holes are kind of big for such a tiny bead but definitely try and move your stuff up so that's why I pulled my thread out a bit I wouldn't normally use kind of messed up thread but you'll see it won't end up in the bracelet after all and what I do is I make sure I go through twice on that bead so it's already been through twice but it, then I'm going through a fourth time and then I can take this off uh, let me do one more time so up the next bead and I'll show you why there okay so that's done now a little hint you can cut it to about here and I leave it so I know where to glue but also when you're doing taking your thread off instead of having to pull and damage your the eye of your needle if you just go ahead and clip it at that spot and pull it out saves your needle a bit I learned that the hard way trying to rip some damaged thread through and end up wrecking my needle so now we're going to take an arm's length and I will pause this because <laughs> It never goes through that easy for me so it usually takes me a little bit to get this in I'll be right back that was funny it went through the first time <laughs> I'll have to do this on camera more often okay so here's the end of our thread so what I want to do is I want to go backwards because I'm gonna go over this so that makes the this thread secure so and it makes the one I'm adding secure um, I think we'll go in this one yeah I think we'll go in this one there. so bring it through but leave a tail there so I leave that tail and now we're going to go to the next bead trying to find the hole without digging through the leather and just be careful not to pull too tight you can move it a bit there and go through just uh, move that tail so it doesn't get tangled There. and then you can pull that one so that it's tight ow I'm gonna have to keep an eye on that one time I was doing a bracelet and I didn't realize I had poked myself and uh, had blood on my hand there was nothing on the bracelet thank goodness that ended up being a bracelet for myself I had to stick myself more often and that's it we just follow this all the way up so this brace bracelet should take you 
definitely no more than an hour but I even think it would be about 30 minutes at the most so it's a it's a definite uh, nice bracelet to make light there I hope you guys could see that that sucks I didn't check okay so I'll, I'll uh, finish threading this and then we'll do the barrel knot at the end and it'll almost be over okay I am done so this is what it looks like at the end and I went through and so there's all these little tails everywhere so we're gonna go ahead and glue those and it, you probably don't have to glue them but I like to just make sure and what you can do with this GS hypo is you can go through the hole as well just be careful these beads are a bit delicate and let me I dab that off. I don't want that much glue. And then we'll go down here. So these ones, you can get the uh, glue in the uh, tip in better. So, and I do both sides. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull those cords tight because they move around a bit. Put some in here. Okay, and just pop my finger on there to stop it from oozing out. Try to get it in the hole. And we just dab this excess off. And pull those tight and just get rid of that lint <laughs> from my... Okay, so let's be careful when you're cutting your threads not to cut the other cords. I've done that. It is not fun. Boy, my fingers are slippery. I did manage to wash my hands with um, mineral spirits I use for painting so, for my artwork. I was like, wait a minute, I said, got something I can clean my hands with. And this one then we're done. So now we're going to go ahead and put some barrel knots. So definitely test it on your wrist to see how far down you want your barrel knot. And then with your button as well. So let's put it one here. So just do that. Hang on to that. And I'm going to go this way. That's one, two, three. And I like to do the same as what I did on the top. But it's no, there's no hard and fast rule. Sometimes I go an extra loop depending if I want to add some length to my bracelet. Pull that tight. Hold your knot. And... Kind of wiggle it from side to side as you're pulling tight and just readjust that so it's not too far up on the and you can squeeze that there let's double check with our button so your button can go in that way or it can go this way so I'm going to go the longer way and now I'm going to take the longer cord that's left you don't have to there's enough leather left you can use the same cord I just like to make things even even when you're going to cut it off anyway and pull that let me double check I still can cinch it a bit yeah let's uh, bring our knot up No more. And pull that in. There. And 
so there that goes in easily. That is awesome, that button. So that's what that looks like. Now let's, we're going to put some little knots, spiral knots on the bottom pieces here to make a little tassel. There's my tube. One, two, that's all you need. And put it in there, push it through. And that's about the right distance. So, and make sure this one's really tight because you don't want this coming undone. And one, two. And kind of match it up with the other one. Okay, I'm going to use my pliers because it's really hurting my hand. I'll use that to, and I'm doing it at the end because it does mar the leather. There. And I'm going to use my clippers. If I can find the nice ones. Oh, they were right beside me all along. So we can cut it really close. Like that, and like that, and we're done. So that is how easy it is. To make this gorgeous bracelet, look at that. <laughs> There. That turned out nice. So you could take some of these and intersperse them in here. And there you have it. And you could probably put this shorter. Put it to about there, I think. So there's that one. Now I use the same beads, the identical beads, and I don't know if you can see this, but here, let's turn it this way. With the darker leather, it looks like a different bead. It looks darker. So it's amazing how that can happen. But you know what? Now that I look at it, I think it is a different bead. <laughs> if you look at this, this is really dark compared to this orange. This is more of a brownie. Yeah. That can't be just the leather creating that difference. That's a huge... Let's see if we can find one that has a lot of... Yeah, here's one. Yeah, this is definitely a darker bead. So, okay, never mind. Don't listen to me. <laughs> and here's the green one. And that's what I was saying. Like, when you're picking these colors, just my advice from some of the beads that I got, pick the darker colors. Some of them look a bit ridiculous, like some of the purples and blues are, it's, it's clear that they've been dyed. And if you want to go with a natural stone, that's fine. There's ways to highlight the colors and the, the lack of color. But here are some of the lighter ones. And you can see it's really, there's not a lot there. So, you know, you really got to work hard to bring out these colors. Thank you so much for watching, and that's a 30-minute tutorial on a $5 bracelet. Yeah! <laughs> Thanks for joining me, and uh, have a nice weekend, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.